Before we get into today's video, I would like to shout out two new subscribers. Uh, let's see, how do we pronounce this? Rome Lucian, the Romeo Ace, and Ricky Inglis. Welcome to the channel. And now, without further ado, let's get on with today's character concept. Greetings, my dear viewers. It is I, Drehon, and welcome back to Dungeons & Dragons Character Concept. Today we are looking at the Thrycreen. The Mantis people. That's right. The Thrycreen are Mantis people. I thought they were grasshoppers, but they are, in fact, Mantis. Another fun fact about the Thrycreen... They are actually from the Forgotten Realms, Faerun. The setting that we play in in most of the Dungeons & Dragons games. I originally thought they originated from the Dark Sun franchise of Dungeons & Dragons. But nope, they're from Forgotten Realms. More specifically, they are from South Faerun in an area known as... The Shar. The Shar is a area of plains and deserts. Oh, what's this? Ormpa? Well, that's a surprise. Well, anyway, that's not the point. The point is, this is their main location. This is where they are most often found. The Shar. So... You're wanting to make your own Thrycreen character because of the new Spelljammer. Well, Spelljammer isn't the only place they come from, as we just mentioned, but that's not going to stop any of you from making a Thrycreen character. In fact, it shouldn't. You can have a character be whatever you want to be. But you are fresh out of ideas, so you have come to me for some suggestions for just a basic character. Or you're looking for some NPCs and wants to have a semi-decent Thrycreen that makes sense based off the lore of the Thrycreen. So let's go ahead and get right into things with backgrounds. The most common backgrounds that you'll find among Thrycreen would be the Far Traveler, the Gladiator, the Hermit, the Outlander, Uthgat tribe members, and of course, wild spacers. As far as classes go, I think the most common classes would be the barbarian, druid, fighter, and even the ranger. Now, according to their, their biology, they don't have a typical speech. They, well, they... Random clicks, a couple of limb rubbing, some chirping, you know, typical bug stuff. This is the Thrycreen language. But they also have the ability to use psionics. So, you might see a couple of psionic-based subclasses in this list. But other than that, everything about them is really dull, if anything. There isn't really much about them. There is something about an old god that they used to follow. Uh, something about an eternal lotus. Uh, mantis of the eternal lotus. Uh, anyway, a very old god that was lost to time. And there was even a famous Thrycree known as Tec Tecti? Tick, tick, kick. Tick, tick, tick. There was it. Tick, tick, kick. Uh, he had been... I think it was some sort of prophet. He was seen as some sort of prophet, was able to gather a bunch of different Thrycreen tribes together, and went to attack the Rock of Brawl, but then met up with some old friends of his and decided to not attack anymore, and 
negotiated peace. That's really it. There's nothing too special. You'd think there would be, but there's not really anything too special. With that being said, let's go ahead and get into things. We're going to start off with the Barbarian, and the only two that really stuck out were the Beast and Totem Warrior Primal Paths. Though, it would make sense to have a Zealot Barbarian as well. Especially if we're going off of these Eternal Lotus followers. But, nothing too fancy. Moving on to Cleric, there are two notable gods that came after the Eternal Lotus god disappeared, and they are two nature gods, one of them being Malar, which seems strange. No, no real connection between Malar and the Thrykreen other than the Thrykreen being tribal hunters. So you probably could have a tribe of evil-aligned Thrykreen who hunt more often for sport, similar to how Malar's followers hunt. But there are also two other gods. One of them, oh, what was her name? Aldai, I think it was. A goddess of the Tempest. And another god, who is the god of war. Can't remember his name either. But either way, there are a total of four gods that were listed on the wiki. So, it made sense to go ahead and have them here. Two nature gods, a tempest goddess, and a war god. Moving on to the druid, probably the most common Thrykreen uh, NPC that you might have, or even player character. These are more of the spiritual leaders. These are more common than the cleric would be. A lot more common. Now, it makes sense to me that on Faerun, you would have Thrykreen that follow the circle of the land, either desert or grassland. For a Thrykreen in a Spelljammer setting, it would make sense to have a Circle of the Stars druid. Moving on to Fighter, this is probably the number one most common Thrykreen you will create. Now, as far as martial archetypes, I would say the Benerit, Battlemaster, Psy Warrior, and even the Samurai would be good choices for a Thrykreen to take up. Though more Battlemaster and Psy Warrior. Moving on to Monk, probably the next most common one, right below Fighter, but above Druid, would be the Monk. For them, I would say Austral Self, Kinsei, Living Weapon, and Soul Knife would be good options. And can you imagine a Thrykreen? with the monastic tradition of the Astral Self. That would be hilarious. You already have four arms, but with your Astral Self, you can grab two more arms and just go to town. Oh, that would be hilarious. Uh, anyway, moving on. The Ranger is next. And Horizon Walker would make sense as far as Spelljammer goes, but as far as Faerun goes... Hunter and Swarm Keeper. Now, Swarm Keeper is only for the bug flavoring, but it still makes sense. <coughs> Pardon me. Moving on to Rogue. Now, the only three that really made sense are the Scout, the Soul Knife, and the Swashbuckler. Soul Knife being, of course, that psionic flavoring, Swashbuckler for more of the Spelljammer theme and Scout for just your stereotypical Thrykreen. And actually, these would probably be more common than the Fighter Thrykreen. But anyway, not important. 
Moving on to Sorcerer. I would say two Sorcerers would make the most sense. Albert Mind, once again for that psionic flavoring, and Divine Soul Sorcerer. This is simply for that uh, lost god, the Lotus, Eternal Lotus Goddess. But uh, anyway, that's really about it. I think there was something else that piqued my interest when picking the Divine Soul Sorcerer, but I can't quite remember what. And finally, the Wizard class. Now, one of the things about the Eternal Lotus was uh, this one thing known as the Lyrics of the Eternal Lotus, which, honestly, that sounded awesome. And so, Blade Singer kind of made sense for something like that, this Lyric of the Eternal Lotus. As well as having the Illusion Arcane Tradition, simply for the fact that, well, the Shar is a bunch of desert and plains, so having a bunch of mirages dancing around the sands would actually make sense. And with that, that is all I have for you today, my dear viewers. I do hope that you enjoyed. That is all for the Spell Jammer races, so next time we tackle character concept, we'll be back on track. Technically, we are on track already, but we're still going. I'm rambling. I do apologize. Anyway, next time we do character concept, it's going to be the Tiefling as the race. I look forward to that one. But that is not all we're going to be doing these next couple of weeks. I do have a couple of Halloween specials taking place during the month of October. But before that, we do have a couple of other videos that we need to take care of. Three more videos before October. So stay tuned for those, especially when we talk about the new Dungeons and Dragons movie because there has seemed to have been a problem with one of the characters that people still have not stopped making jokes about. And I thought my only problem was going to be the Spelljammer jokes. Anyway, that's all the time I have for you today. I hope to see you again. Until next time, this has been Drehan, and I... I'm offline.